Entrepreneurial Edge is brought to you by Business Banking from FNB. Because small ideas can lead to big business. FNB, how can we help you? Just paint us a picture of uh, the business interests that you've got. Because obviously, uh, one thing that uh, we have talked about earlier is the fact that your uh, business opened the first ever shopping mall in Soweto, yes. near Johannesburg here. Yes. Uh, a lot of people said, no, shopping malls are only for the suburbs. Yes. Perhaps we could start there. How difficult was it to convince investors to go along with you? It was, it was, it was such a difficult feat. Um, we really had to go around on a roadshow to try and convince investors, to convince tenants. Um, because those were the key, uh, you know, ingredients that we needed to make it uh, a success. Uh, my dad had always wanted to have, uh, you know, a, a shopping center for, for the people of Soweto. And uh, the notion that there was no market, or it was not known, or there was not enough research, it, we found it very laughable, actually, because uh, when we asked the question, who supports your shops? In, your, in, in the cities, in the suburbs, and other areas. 80% or more were saying are people from Soweto. And then you say there is no market, there is, uh, the market is not tested. And, and, and when you read or you hear uh, people talk at uh, property conferences and retail conferences, they will tell you that uh, people want to shop where they live. But for some reason, apartheid had created this notion in South Africa that that does not apply uh, to the black people of this country. But of course, then, you know, we had to go around uh, uh, to the tenants and give a presentation that if you give the people the option, you will see what happens. And today, we have people fighting for space at Mapunyamo. But now, many years later, I understand people are actually competing to yes. get inside this, this mall. Um, how big has it grown in, in, just tell us how many years since it opened up? Since um, it opened up in, 19, in 2007. So it's been running now, uh, this is the fifth year. Uh, and it's been enormous, it's, it's been fantastic. Uh, you know, and when we opened, it was just, uh, just before the, the, the crunch, the credit crunch. And it was a very difficult time. And uh, you know, th when you open a shopping center, it usually goes through uh, one or two years uh, of settling. Uh, so to have that and coupled with uh, the fact that uh, we were going through a recession ma you know, made it difficult for us. And also because we wanted to make sure that we include a lot of tenants who are first time retailers from the local community. Uh, and uh, we had to engage with them through the process, engaged with uh, the, their funders to make them understand uh, that you know we are going through a phase. Once we are out of the phase, uh, and you know they will be all fine. Those who survived are laughing all the way to the bank, <laughs> and unfortunately, not everybody succeeded. And what about the recession? I mean, I, if you walk around this town, you see shops closed, you see mm. malls closed in some mm. cases. Mm. How did the Maponya Mall? Uh, you get know, it? right through that period, we had about a three percent uh, vacancy rate. Uh, which is uh, it, uh, not seen in any other areas. In other areas, it was 5% and more. Um, and we don't have any vacancy as we speak, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, but also uh, the fact that uh, as much as uh, there is a, a big credit uh, market, but there's also a big cash market. Uh, pick and pay, for instance, had to adjust uh, to the cash management because the, a lot of the business was, was on cash basis. So the ones with the credit cards who were feeling the credit crunch, uh, it was not so much of an impact uh, in, in Soweto. And one thing I can say, I covered uh, the World Cup 2010 for yes. CNBC. Yes. And uh, one thing I can say is that the buying of the tickets we covered all over this town in the most orderly and joyful by far. Was, was the Mapunya Mall? I remember those absolutely. pictures for a Even long, long time. Even though people camped overnight <laughs> to yes, make sure exactly. that they get those tickets. I know it's bad. So, and yeah. the rest of the business, whereabouts are you, you growing into uh, in this day and age? Um, in coal mining, yes. coal in particular, uh, we are doing beneficiation and uh, supplying either exports or locally. Uh, we are also in agriculture, uh, poultry and maize. Uh, we're looking at milling. Uh, but we're also looking around, you know, a community empowerment uh, program around uh, agriculture, both on the maize side and on the poultry side. 
uh, where we would be the end users and we would be the processing uh, and uh, accessing to the markets for the community. So it w it's working very well that, you know, um, the areas that we've identified and the communities that we are working with are going to be benefiting on a larger scale and having their products, which they are, um, would have been subsistence, uh, is ha has been upscaled to commercial and they are having access to larger markets. We are also in energy um, manufacturing. We are looking at um, establishing manufacturing facilities for big plant equipment like your turbines, your boilers, and your generators. And this is, of course, uh, what we are wanting to do for the continent. Uh, property, uh, we are extending beyond the borders. Uh, we are hoping there'll be Maponya Mall on every country <laughs> on the continent. Now, I understand you've got four of your siblings working in the business. I mean, yes. are they all infused with the entrepreneurial spirit like yourself and your father? They are. We are all different personalities, uh, but uh, I think one thing that we learned was working hard. Um, and that's something that both my parents Im uh, imparted onto us. So at least uh, when, when it comes to that, we are all supportive. When we have to put shoulder to the wheel, everybody plays their part. How tough is it to be a Maponyo in business? I mean, surely when you drop the name, sometimes people shake, rub their hands <laughs> and their eyes go bright. Oh, OK, uh, yes. you've got money. So <laughs> Absolutely. How, how difficult is it for it's you? It's very difficult because there are times when we are in, in, you know, managing cash flow and uh, we need to be talking to either investors or to the banks to say, hey, cut us some slag here, you know, and the banks are saying, but you know, you, you, you should be fine. You should be funding other people. And of course, then you have uh, other budding entrepreneurs who are saying, uh, you have loads of uh, money, pockets of money. Uh, can you fund us on this project or that project? Uh, but it's, it's, it's interesting and uh, wherever we are able to assist, we do so. Um, and it's, it's, you know, we're spreading and sharing what we have achieved and what we have learned as well. And how difficult is it to be a woman in business in Africa in this yeah. day and age? It's, you know, it's, it's amazing how uh, things have not changed as much as uh, we see and we, we think have changed. Uh, in the property sector, for instance, uh, when we were doing the construction of Mapunya Mall, you will not believe that in many of the meetings except one, uh, I was the only woman. Uh, there, were, there was a QS lady who was uh, the, um, a female and uh, another lady, uh, an engineer. So it was just the three of us around a team of w pale, uh, oldish, middle-aged <laughs> men. <laughs> <laughs> but um, w it's unfortunate that at the f stage that we are at, there, there's a sense that we need to do more than our counterparts because we must prove that we are worth the while. We must prove that we can deliver just as much, if not better. But I think there's also an innate ability for women to look at things differently. Um, we are nurturing it by nature. Uh, and I see it with myself. I don't know uh, if it's a general rule uh, amongst uh, women. Everything that I get involved in, uh, get involved in um, I, I give it my all. And I want to make sure that it benefits not only me, but the people around me. And the environment uh, is not just a work environment. I understand that uh, people are sacrificing their family time. They're leaving their kids behind. And it has to be a pleasant environment. People must feel that they want to be here. Now, there's, um, there's a, a lady uh, that we interviewed recently uh, in mining, um, mm -hmm. and she was saying that uh, she thinks that still in business there's this idea of th the business types want women around, mm -hmm. and they'll have a separate discussion, the men, and they'll come to the women and say, okay, you can have three or four percent if you're lucky. Oh, yes. Is that true? Oh, yes. That is so prevalent. I mean, it still happens each time there's any transaction that's been discussed. Uh, women are never considered in the core of the business. It's almost just to tick the box that, oh, we, we don't comply. Can we get a group of women just to give them the 3% to comply? You know, it's not about what is it that they are bringing on the table that they can tr contribute, that they can add value with. And how vigorously do you oppose this in your business? 
Come on, give us some details. Very vigorously. I think if, if, <laughs> if there's anything I've learned from my dad, <laughs> it's never to accept a no. Um, no, I, I strongly oppose it. I think uh, women have a lot more to contribute uh, than just ticking the box. Um, we are hard workers, we are dedicated, we are loyal. Um, and we think differently, you know, it, men tend to think this is how we learned at school and this is how the uh, business schools taught us and this is how it's done. But women will always come up with creative ways of uh, achieving the same results but uh, doing so much more or s differently to achieve uh, the same if not better. Well, one thing I can say is some of the best journalists I've ever met have been women, so I'll say that for a start. But uh, a temper's lost in the boardroom over this sort of thing yes. these days? Yes. I mean, what, what was your worst day? Uh, I've walked out of meetings uh, because I felt uh, as a woman I was not being listened to or not valued or appreciated. Um, and of course, that makes people listen. Uh, but it should not go to that extent. Uh, people should be able to listen and uh, you know appreciate the value that we bring on the table without having to throw toys uh, <laughs> out of, of the court. As and speaking about cots, last yes. but not least, the next generation, the young Maponyas coming up. Yes. Are they all waiting to get into the business with they a are, vengeance? They are waiting to get into the business. And are they all going to go? My daughter is, uh, is, is did uh, become finance and uh, she's working as an analyst and I've been telling her make sure you get and learn enough and I wanted to get the independence because at some point that is also what I did to get you know for me to gain my the, my dad's confidence and respect I had to go out of the family business to prove that I can do it and it was for myself too you know m moving out of that uh, mollycoddled protected environment uh, and when I came back, I said, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And he listened. Gigi Maponya, the guiding spirit of the Maponya family business, has indeed been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Chris. Program. It's been wonderful being here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'm afraid that's the wrap of this episode of The Entrepreneurial Edge. We'll see you next week, same time. Until then, from myself, Chris Bishop, it's goodbye.